Hello? In times of hardship, we endure. In times of peace, we toil to preserve. In times in between, we party. Or at least, this is how Kazuma does things. If you're curious about the other seasons, or want to avoid spoilers, I have a playlist here on screen somewhere. Anyway, this is season 3 of Konosuba. The story this time begins with a bit of a recap from the movie. Kazuma has a visceral nightmare regarding a certain terrifying hermaphrodite. Later, the heroes celebrate saving the Crimson Demon Village at the tavern. Kazuma is a man on edge, then suddenly profound. He wishes to find faith after being emotionally and sexually traumatized by various women and creatures, Aqua attempts to proselytize him during this weakness, but fails. Kazumara gets proper advice from the yoked weaver and begins his journey to become a holy man, girls in tow. Megumin reminisces while Kazuma berates everyone in the party. Goomer has enough and annihilates a nearby mountain out of frustration. As a result, they must camp in the wilderness while her mana recovers. Kazuma pulls an all-nighter to keep watch. Megumin and him share a heart-to-heart -heart about home, explosions, adventure, and enterprise. Megumin states that her journeys with everyone have been unimaginably fun and begins to flirt. Kazuma panics and decides to respond in kind. She sleep. The next day, an injured forest being is encountered. Kazumber is cautious. He reads a word-for-word -word description of a plant monster who uses empathy to kill while each of the girls falls for her trap. They aren't immediately dismembered, which is good I guess, but Kazakistan also falls under the mysterious little girl's empathetic spell. She cries while stating that after they kill her, she would like to be reborn not as a monster, but as a human. A single teardrop saves her life, and they continue along their path. Kazuma has a brain blast. By remembering the temple that's nearby, he figures he could visit the monster girl to give her food. Upon running back to converse, he catches her in the midst of practicing for the next traveler to pass by. Kazuma is shook. The wicked girl is presumably slain off screen, and Kazuma returns to his party with some loot from a victim and a change of heart. Aqua finds this little mallet familiar and attempts to confiscate it from Kazuma. Money? Hmm, more money. They head back to Axel, fulfilled and unbothered by the demon Chimera Lady from the movie. Chris totally robs them of their magical money mallet. Later, Kazuma flops around in despair. A surprise guest makes the sloths go feral. It's a dusty family butler who bears ill news from her family. A personal summons for Kazuma to speak with the royal princess Iris. Intrigue. As she writhes around on the floor in terror, darkness fears for Kazuma's life and her family's standing with an informed understanding of what kind of man he is. Kazuma romanticizes about his upcoming visitation, while a scantily clad darkness attempts to get him to reconsider. She is reprimanded and writhes in ecstasy. Kazuma goes to investigate his batch of Japanese products at Wiz's shop. It's a bunch of themed lighters. The women are elated. Aqua is berated for not assisting them with the item production, and outs him as a filthy laundry sniffer in retaliation. Later, Aqua does party tricks to lure in a crowd but ends up distracting the populace instead of enticing them. Vanier becomes aggressive, while Wiz takes the opportunity to herd the plebs. Business is doing well. Vintner makes Kuzer and Meagle nervous by reading their minds and imparts a gift upon Kazuma. At the Dustiness Mansion, the party begins to prepare to greet Princess Iris. Darkness is radiant. Megumer is flat-chested and angry. Aqua and her get dressed up eventually, though. At last, they meet the princess, who has some grapes on her. Aqua and Megumin instantly embarrass themselves. Kazuma is berated for not bowing and requests a change of princesses. Darkness and Kazuma are both disappointed for different reasons. Aqua captures the princess's heart by creating a vivid speed painting of her as a clutch W, and so they proceed to dine. Kazuma is asked to regale the princess with tales of his adventures, specifically how he bested Mitsurugi. So he passionately does, then lies about his past before becoming an adventurer. The princess's guard, Claire, requests to examine his adventurer's card, but darkness deflects to prevent Kazuder's shady skills from being uncovered. Doubts of his victory over Mitsubishi enter Iris's mind as a result. Kazuma gets defensive in response, but darkness diffuses the situation with her prestige. 
The vibe died a horrible death, however, and the adventurers are dismissed. Megumi nearly goes berserk, but holds back because of Darkness's concerns. This causes Dark Mess to run to Kazuma's defense, beckoning the princess to offer an apology for calling Kazuma a liar. Iris doubles down and is slapped for being rude. Darkness is briefly attacked, then gently scolds the princess. Kazuma gives in at seeing his friends show so much gumption, and reveals how he beat Mitsugugu by fighting Claire. He unleashes the ultimate ability used to defeat many foes, Steel. He wins the duel by attrition. All is well between parties, and the princess goes to apologize. Sometime later, they gather in the courtyard to send her off. As they begin to teleport, Iris suddenly grabs Kazuma's arm, teleporting him to the royal palace. Jazuma fills the princess's young mind with his lascivious tales, and is almost disemboweled by Claire. He is instead given a firm scolding, but continues to enthrall Iris with his greasy stories. Back in time, Kazuma is given a life of luxury as a guest of the princess despite being technically kidnapped. Iris' maid reassures him, and encourages Kazuma to continue playing along with the princess's wishes. Noticing the cold vibes, Iris confesses that she was just jealous of how much fun Darkness seemed to be having. Sometime later, it turns out that Iris is interested in Kazuma's school days. She gets a forlorn look on her face when he mentions starting her own though. Suddenly, alarms heralding the Demon Lord's forces sound, a bitter reminder that the kingdom cannot afford the luxuries of school during an all-out race war. After the raid is suppressed, Kazuma is thanked for recounting his greasy exploits and is allowed to return to Axel. He promises to visit Iris again. She responds by equating him to her older brother. Kazuma's fantasies are instantly fulfilled, and he decides to remain. The next day, he awakens to his big city living, lounging in bed, observing the housemaid, and being doted on by his newly acquired little sister. Iris. He forgot to put on pants though, and loses the title Big Brother. They continue to have a pleasant time together, causing mischief around the palace. Kazuma begins to understand the princess better over time. Iris is essentially at the mercy of her caretakers, like a bird in a cage. Standard princess rebellion business, Kazuma is the only one who treats her like a regular person, and so he's her favorite now. It's been a week, and Kazuma has already adapted to the aristocratic lifestyle. He awaits his prey, Mary, the cleaning lady, who is predicted to enter his chambers momentarily. His women emerge from the doorway. Kazuma is shook. Darkness scolds him for being a vile degenerate, then explains how they arrived to take him back. Kazuma defends his new profession. Aquat is jealous. After eavesdropping, Iris shows up to apologize for stealing Kenny away. Darkness continues to elaborate how Kazuma has become an important figure in the town of Axel. Kazuma astrally projects his rainbow shadow clones to gaslight Iris telepathically, but fails. So now he must attend his going away party. Aqua and Megumin partake of the lavish banquet. Kazuma droops in the corner, and Darkness is swarmed by the horny gentry. Aldarp arrives to assert his dominance, proclaiming the first prince Jatis to be Lady Dustiness's perfect suitor. Kazuma defends her place beside him by bringing up their artificial affair. He dies. Later, he sulks below the night sky, alone and away from the festivities. Iris saves him from his psychology by being present. As Aqua summons a giant frog from inside the venue, the princess reflects on how quiet the castle will be once he's gone, revealing her admiration for Kazuma's authenticity and reiterating her jealousy of darkness. She comes to the conclusion that becoming an adventurer would be a good idea and rambles about what class she might be. By doing so, she mentions a famous thief who targets only nefarious nobles, and donates the appropriated riches to Eris sect charities. Kazuma is suddenly filled with the inspiration to capture said thief, and announces his intentions to the entire aristocracy. Truly, he only wants to stay in the capital, but there are some shady folks in the crowd who excitedly welcome the challenge he just gave himself. Claire accepts his proposition, and instructs him to live at various residences which are likely targets. He is shook. Later, it's Aldorp. Aldorp is displeased by their presence, and finds that the adventurers are the epitome of his expectations, barring darkness. Kazuma wanders the mansion's hallways in search of possible infiltration points of interest, and stumbles upon Derp being a perv. Their interests have suddenly overlapped. As Kazuma attempts to seize control of the Sanctum of Smut, he flexes his superiority over Aldorp by blackmailing him, but finds that they could be homies instead. Darkness tramples their newly established friendship and dream, though. Three days later, Megumin and Kazuma flirt briefly 
but they are both sundere. Days of exploding the local geography follow, terrifying the citizens. Aqua drinks all the booze in the mansion, and Kazuma terrorizes the maid staff. Aldorp easily convinces Darkness to have them leave. Later that night, Kazuma stumbles upon the thief and pounces into action. They recognize each other and catch up briefly. Kazuma doesn't want to be sucked into any extra trouble, so he convinces Chris to tie him up and leave. The backup subjugation force arrives, finding him in a bind. Kazuma lies about having just faced a fearsome foe. Aqua apologizes for digging around his room and breaking his stuff while he was in the capital. The girls get aggressive, making ample use of his fetters. The next day, Kazuma reports on his failure and is scolded by the aristocracy. Iris thanks him for preventing a robbery and Claire dismisses him. While Aquafer and Costco are purchasing booze at the market, Mitsubishi Kyoker shows up to say hello. He attempts to seduce Aqua with a ring which doesn't fit. That night, Chris wakes Kazumba to explain herself. He remains uninterested in her problems, but receives an explanation anyway. She has been gathering powerful items known as divine treasures, which are only given to reincarnations like Kazuma. He recalls his stolen money mallet, which fits that description. Chris is throttled and questioned further. She cannot disclose details about the client or her reasons though. Kazuma wants no trouble, but Chris must steal a relic from the castle and needs his help. She remains persistent until Kazuma threatens sexual assault. Situation defused successfully. The Demon King's army has arrived for a nighttime raid, however. Darkness has trouble convincing Kazuma and Aqua to join, while Megumin is bristling with fervor to assist the vanguard. Kazuma has a brain blast amidst the party's quarreling. If he is able to achieve greatness during battle, he might be able to return to the castle. The hero arrives to save the day, and Aqua is dragged into action. The local guard is pumped, as Kazuma gets rejected for being too low level. Claire and some fellow adventurers back him up with facts and ample cheers. Iris is inspired. Aqua has a mental breakdown, but is reassured by Kazuma's feigned confidence. And so, humanity's forces head into battle. Eris silently scolds Kazuma for dying horribly again. During the fight, Aqua gets beat up by regular trash mobs until being inspired by her wrath. Kazuma chases a pathetic lone kobold into a horde of freaks. And here we are once more. Eris is speechless with disappointment. She attempts to lecture him on sexually assaulting Chris, but fails. She forgives him, teases him about Iris, then gives him a task to collect the divine treasures. Kazuma revives to find that the battle is already over and contemplates his situation. Some divine treasures have gone missing, one with the ability to summon monsters for free and another with the ability to freaky Friday with someone. Darkness is swarmed by valiant knights who admire her stamina and courage. Megumin is paraded through the crowds on a stretcher as the ultimate mage who would reduce all to cinders in her explosive wake. That night Night, Iris greets Kazuma Gin and escorts them to Kazuma's room in the royal palace. Kazuma and Megumin reflect on their life of constant adversity and sentimentally decide that returning to Axel is probably for the best. Iris comes in to offer thanks for his valiant contribution to battle. Megulodon notices the princess's necklace is a powerful magical item and promptly fantasizes about its potential. Iris explains how it was a gift from her brother Jatis and that no one knows how to use it. Her necklace is clear a divine treasure, given the Japanese inscription on the back. Kazuma accidentally activates it by reading the Japanese. Iris and Kuzco get swip swapped. Both parties involved seem to be relatively fine with being in their new bodies. Kazuma recalls Eris's description of the item and notices that the effects are only temporary, so things will eventually return to normal. Iris sees an excellent opportunity to go on an adventure outside the castle. Megumin offers her assistance in the matter, but is repulsed by being called Big Sister by someone who looks insane sounds exactly like Kazuma. The real Kazuma has second thoughts. Meanwhile, he finds way too much enjoyment from being exalted royalty. Mitsurugi shows up to be charismatic, but after patting Kazuma's head, is sentenced to execution. Claire becomes suspicious as Mitsurugi runs off. Kazuma inquires about Darkness's whereabouts, and after finding that she is likely bathing, requests to wash her back. He convinces Claire further by offering to wash her back as well. Kazuma appears to have unleashed a chain of events, which should never have awakened. Later, in the baths, Kazuma finds himself unprepared for the degeneracy he ignited, and comes to an understanding of the destined purpose of the divine treasure he used. Then thanks Eris for his profound luck stat, as Iris experiences the adventures of Kazuma Satow firsthand by taking a fist to the face in an alleyway somewhere. And that's the end of part one of season three of Konosuba. Hey, thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, comment, and check out more of my videos. Only if you feel like it though, no pressure homie. I have a Patreon for anyone who is interested also. Um...